In this video, we'll take an overview of the Adobe Fresco interface. So I'll go ahead and double tap the Fresco icon to open. And when we first start Fresco, we'll arrive at the home screen. And here we can create new documents, uh, either by hitting create new, uh, or you might also see some shortcuts there for different document formats. We can also open existing documents uh, by clicking on your files. You can see I've got a couple here that I can go into. And we've also got a link to some really helpful tutorials under the Learn and Discover buttons. So I'll go ahead and open one of those documents just by tapping on it. And we'll start off at the top of our interface here with the title bar. And here we've got a button to return to the home screen. That's a little triangle in the upper left corner. We'll see the name of the current document and an indicator of whether it has unsaved changes. So if we see a little asterisk next to that document name, that tells us that uh, we've made changes that haven't yet been saved. Now, Fresco is pretty good about automatically saving from time to time, but if you ever need to save manually, you can just click the little drop down next to the file name. And here you get the option to either rename it, and I'll cancel that, or you can manually save now. Next to our saving dropdown, we've got the current zoom level. I can see right now I'm looking at this at 85% scale. And we have two arrows, one for undo and one for redo. This little question mark icon will give us links to lots of helpful tutorials and learning resources for how to use Fresco. And these two icons right here give us all sorts of options to share and export our documents, send them to other people, uh, save them out as different kinds of files, etc. The gear icon will give us access to settings that will apply to the entire app itself, as well as to the current document. And then next to that, we have an icon for full screen mode uh, that just reduces some of the interface and gives us a little bit more room to draw. Next, let's take a look at the layers panel. So that's the stack of icons here on the right side of the interface. Now only one layer will be active at a time and we can see it's the one that's highlighted in blue. So we can just tap to change the active layer. Now we can hide the entire layers palette by clicking this icon that looks like a little stack. And we can go into the layer properties uh, for the currently selected layer. And there we can set things like the name, the blend mode, and the opacity. Down towards the middle here, uh, we've got an option for adding a new layer that will add a new layer above the currently active one. Let's go back and uh, activate a different layer that has some imagery in it. And we can use this eyeball to toggle the visibility of a layer so we can hide it or show it. All the way down at the bottom, we've got these three dots here. That gives us access to the layer actions menu. And this gives us lots of additional options for editing or manipulating our layers. Over on the left side of the screen, we've got the toolbar. And we can see which tool is active because it's highlighted in blue. All we need to do to switch tools is tap on a different tool, and you can see I can activate any one that I please. Uh, so at the top here, we've got pixel brushes. These are probably the kinds of brushes that you're most familiar with coming from Photoshop or other drawing programs. Next, we've got live brushes. Uh, these are really cool and offer us simulated properties of oil paint and watercolor. And then we've got vector brushes. Now we'll cover the ins and outs of all of those in a different video. Uh, so let's press on with the toolbar. Here we've got an eraser tool, a smudge brush, a move and transform tool. Let's cancel out of that. Selection tools, a fill tool, shape tools that act sort of like stencils, a text tool, an eyedropper, an option to import image files, and then a color chip, which will show us the currently selected color. You may also notice that some of these tools in the toolbar, for example, the brush tool, have a little triangle below and to the right. This is an indication that there are either extra settings or additional similar tools that we can expose by either tapping and holding or double tapping uh, on that tool. So for example, here, we've got options for picking different brushes and brush settings, or we might see something like underneath the selection tool, we'll see options for different modes of selecting pixels in a document. Now, next to the toolbar, we've also got the tool options panel. Uh, this is gonna give us detailed settings for whatever current tool we have selected. And you can see uh, as I switch, we'll get a slightly different set of options uh, from one tool to the next.
Now, if you've got a larger iPad than I've got here, uh, you can drag this to the bottom of the toolbar and dock it there. Uh, in my case here, I'm just going to leave this undocked. Next, we'll take a look at the touch shortcut, and that's this circle here uh, that by default will be in the lower left corner of your interface. Now, this acts as a modifier to the behavior of whatever the current tool is. It's a little bit similar to the shift key uh, when you're working on a device with a keyboard. And if we want to move it somewhere else, we can touch and drag it, uh, you know, so if you're right-handed or left-handed, uh, you can put it wherever you please. And to show a little bit of how this works, let's switch back to the pixel brush. And I'll go ahead and hold on the touch shortcut. Now when I start to draw, you can see in the upper right corner, I'm getting uh, a message about how my behavior is changing along with that shortcut. So what's happening here is that when I touch that shortcut, it's going to change my pixel brush from a laying down color mode to an erasing mode. Now, if you don't want to sit there with your finger over the touch shortcut the whole time, you can also double tap and that will sort of lock it in place and then just double tap again to turn it back off. So that's a nice quick overview of the Adobe Fresco interface.